The continent of Africa is the oldest and most stable landmass on Earth. Situated at the core of an ancient supercontinent called Pangaea, which means literally all lands, Africa escaped collisions with other pieces of the giant landmasses after they started to split apart 200 million years ago. About 90 million years ago, Africa lay at the center of a smaller supercontinent called Gondwanaland, which included Africa, Australia, Antarctica, India, and South America. The plates that make up Earth's outer shell are still drifting slowly but continuously apart. Once Africa was free of its neighbors about 70 million years ago, this core continent's birds and animals evolved in isolation. In view of Africa's central role in geologic terms, it's not surprising that this continent was destined to be the cradle of mankind. The ancestors of all humanity evolved in Africa. The earliest evidence of their existence has been found in East Africa at locations scattered north and south of the equator. The evidence consists of fossil bones, stone tools, and a trail of footprints petrified in the surface of a mud pan. Their footsteps took them towards the woods and grasslands which are now known as the Serengeti Plains. Our human ancestors made their living from and among the animals with whom they shared the landscape. Our ancestors were diminutive figures, neither large nor numerous. They existed nowhere else on earth for over six million years. Researchers have found a wealth of hominid remains in Africa's Rift Valley, a huge geologic structure that runs from Ethiopia south to Malawi. These skull reconstructions on display at the Museum of Natural History in New York show the diversity of human ancestral skull types that evolved over the course of millions of years in Africa. The fossil evidence suggests that ancestral hominids were widely dispersed and constantly on the move. Their special talents were the generalized ability to take advantage of diverse opportunities. They were also unique in that they stood upright and walked on two feet. This freed their hands to use tools, and it's also thought to have improved their ability to stay cool in their upright posture. Our modern human species, Homo sapiens, with a large brain and a talent for innovation, evolved from that ancestral stock in Africa. About 100,000 years ago, groups of modern humans left Africa for the first time. From this African genesis, a web with thousands of meandering pathways evolved in all directions as our ancestors migrated to all corners of the earth, leading us to where we live today. Perhaps that is why each time I return to Africa, I have a strong feeling that I'm completing a cycle, that I'm coming home again. It's a thrill to be walking the same ground that my ancestors did so long ago, and to meet tribal folk who make this part of the world their home. This village was built within sight of Mount Kilimanjaro. Popular myth has it that Queen Victoria gave this mountain to Kaiser Wilhelm for his 40th birthday in 1886. Although there is probably no truth to the story, it reflects how the European powers drew up the borders throughout Africa with no regard for tribal territories. Long before the British claimed Kenya for their expanding empire, the fierce Maasai tribe drifted south from Somalia and Ethiopia to claim the best grazing lands for their herds of cattle in the vast grasslands of East Africa. Maasai men and women are tall and muscular as a result of their rigorous lifestyle. They subsist mostly on a diet of blood that is drawn from the jugular vein of a cow after an arrow has opened a small wound. The blood in the gourd is then mixed with milk to create a pink yogurt of sorts. After the blood has been drawn, the wound is sealed up with mud and the animal suffers no ill effect. 
Watching this large group of Maasai wearing their blood-red togas brings to mind the persistent legend that these young warriors are descended from a long-lost legion of soldiers who were recruited to fight in the campaigns of Anthony and Cleopatra. Their jump dance is their trademark ritual. The children watching practice their jumping too. Sharing in their dance and song, we were impressed by their close-knit sense of community and their hospitality to us. They are in a period of deep transition as they try to balance their traditional lifestyle with the increasing pressures from the modern world. They live in simple shelters constructed of interwoven branches mixed with mud and dung called manadas. Their villages are surrounded with dense thorn hedges to protect their cattle from predators. These independent nomadic people are becoming increasingly settled for better access to drinking water and education. Inside his boma, Zachariah talked to me about his domestic arrangements and the challenges his family faces. So we used to sleep on a cowhide. Children's beds and, uh, and parents' bed. The elder children, they don't sleep where the parents sleep. They have to sleep with their stepmom houses or to their grandmom houses. We separate girls and boys. So the house have got the fireplace. The middle here is where we cook. We cook here, we serve, we eat and we sleep. So this is our grandma here, sitting near children's bed. And we got small places here for keeping the young ones of sheep and goats for them to milk every morning. Okay? Beautiful house. Yes. Any questions? How long did it take you to build this uh, house? It spends four months to do the construction. And a, a well built Maasai house spent 15 years. 15 years at last? Yeah. So this is a permanent village? Yeah, this is a permanent village. Okay, and how, do you, how far do you have to go to get water? Uh, we used to go and fetch uh, water from the stream of Lake Amboseli. And how far is that? Three and a half kilometer walking okay. and three and a half kilometer coming. How long does that take you to do? Uh, they fetch every morning hours and every noon hours, like two, 2 to 3 p.m. Okay. Yeah. And do you have the donkeys help you carry the water? Sometimes yeah. they got uh, the donkeys. Okay. Although we lost our animals for, I can say, four years ago. For what? That was a, a, a big drought. Oh. Yeah, many donkeys, many cows, many goats and sheep. So probably <coughs> women used to fetch and they carry 20 liters on their backs. Since their donkeys were all killed in a drought, the women of the village must carry heavy 20-liter barrels of water to the village almost every day. It is a testament to Zachariah's wife's strength that she is able to bear her burden with such grace. Maasai women work hard to provide for their men and their children. Their babies are born inside the manadas without access to modern medicine, although the village does have skilled midwives. The Maasai are expert at starting fires using basic tools. All humanity shares a deep-seated fascination with fire, perhaps because fire released man from fear and nurtured the spark of creativity. Making fires is an ancient skill, one that forms the basis of humankind's advancement, our ability to ward off the darkness at night and the ability to cook food. To see it all enacted by the Maasai within the tribal village was a powerful reminder of the importance fire has played in human evolution. The Samburu tribe lives north of the equator on Kenya's Laikipedia Plateau. These people are even more flamboyant than the Maasai. They are able to dance in a circle for hours as they celebrate their status as young warriors. Their jumping dance has evolved as a kind of competition between the men and it is also meant to attract their female counterparts. At this age, they enjoy considerable status and freedom, which is sharply curtailed once they become more serious village elders. 
As they pass by, I admire their elaborate beaded necklaces that are gifts from their girlfriends. The young women gradually insinuate themselves into the circle of dance, falling into perfect step and vocal harmony. These are a proud people with a rich heritage. Nearby in the same village, the married women have their own energetic dance circle. They invite the girls from our group to join them. In Gerereri village on the Ululu escarpment in the Maasai Mara game reserve is often called out of Africa because the final scenes from this movie were shot at this windy location. A lone woman sits by the edge of the escarpment hoping to sell some of her handicrafts to the tourists before they leave. Since most of the men were out herding cattle, the women of the village greeted us. Again, it was the women of our group who were asked to join them in this welcome ritual dance. This long building serves as a permanent school for the village children. They were clearly excited because they could see that we had brought gifts. I couldn't help wondering what the future holds in store for these children. The permanence of this village gives mute testimony to the fact that the nomadic lifestyle of their parents and grandparents has clearly ended. This close-knit community will no longer pack up everything to follow the cattle to better pastures, and there is little incentive for them to migrate to urban centers in Kenya where the unemployment rate runs at 50% or more. Their western style, hand-me-down clothes, imply an erosion of their Maasai cultural heritage. They are people in transition, caught between two worlds. Happiness shines in their young faces. The gift-giving is a bittersweet moment. There are not enough presents to go around. Kenya has one of the world's fastest growing populations. This has huge implications for these young people and how they will divide their diminishing resources. Their knowledge of English as children will stand them in good stead as they grow up to deal with visitors from the United States, Britain and Australia. The soccer balls we brought really got the kids gleeful attention. They ran free and fast with reckless abandon. At a happy moment like this, it's easy to forget our differences and concentrate on all that we have in common with people from any part of the world.
Even though physical and cultural differences set us apart as we adapted to different environments, our DNA differs only by one-tenth of a percent, regardless of where we live or what we look like. We should never forget that the ultimate proof of our common humanity is the universal desire to see a better future for our children.